Hi guys and welcome back. It's your girl, Gabby.com. <sighs> Sorry guys. I am doing a video. And if you can tell by my t-shirt, it is a BTS video. Yes, I'm back to doing those. I know I took a state little sabbatical, maybe not if I edited the content weird, but I am back to doing BTS related content because that's what the people expect from an RMA. Expect from a me, honestly. Or me. Me, this me. But I have a fun little twist on, you know, several games that I play on this channel, which is shipping up, which is a lot of what I do. I'm not gonna ship up BTS with women again, maybe. It's kind of, I mean, it's not just women. I'm doing song ship ups. I did song siblings recently not recently actually kind of a while ago but i find that uh bts is collaborating with a lot more artists they've collaborated with the likes of you know halsey and um juice world and you know they've collaborated with a lot of great people even individually max hayes they've collaborated okay becky g we love to see them interacting with our outside world so that we know that they are not just a simulation even though it's been proven by seeing them in concert that they're not just a simulation but you still can't be sure what if they were hollow Holograms. What if Chung Cook was a hologram that caught a rose? Hmm? 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 Anyways. With that being said, I have picked out a few artists specifically uh, that I would like to see mash up. We've seen recently that mashups can come from all unexpected places, like Adele and Mega The Stallion. Number two, get that y'all pain with you. They better know exactly what the fuck they came to do. So, with that being said, I have chosen some songs, uh, some of my favorite songs by the BTS members and some artists and one of their songs that I think would work as a great mashup feature situation. We're going to start at the top though, where we always start with our fearless leader and president, Mr. Kim Nam Joon. Junie. Joon's if you're nasty. For him, he has always been a thought-provoking writer and a really just millennial man he is a renaissance man in love with the arts and the the greatness that is within our capability well with that being said i paired him up with another renaissance man who i dreamly greatly appreciate how they write their lyrics so much so that they are tattooed actually right next to bts on my arm i have this tattoo from my favorite song by them that is the one that i'm going to put on the list uh, with Mr. RM to see if he could feature that with one of his songs. Uh, the song that I'm choosing for RM is Everything Goes from his album Mono um, and his, his like solo album Mono. Um, I think it's an amazing song. I think it's one of my favorite songs on the album. I think it's super underrated and I would like to pair him up with uh, Riley Ritchie. Riley Ritchie, love him. He, if you don't know who he is, he was on Game of Thrones, um, but mostly he is a singer who has a phenomenal voice and range. Um, one of my favorite songs by him is Bloodsport, but that is not what we are putting him with today. We are putting him, uh, in RM's Everything Goes, we're putting him up with Riley Ritchie's Time in a Tree, which is this tattoo right here. Both of them kind of deal with this idea of, you know, time passing and, you know, like the, the ability to to travel in that time and what it means to you specifically. If you see Riley Ritchie's music video, you really get that uh, vibe. It kind of like you can almost put Riley Ritchie's music video over RM song and it kind of still holds true and makes sense. And it's so beautiful and it's just I feel like it would be great. So here's a sample of Everything Goes. And here's a sample of Time in a Tree. Got an anxious heart and it still may can't take paper or heartbreak. 
Did Billy Joe have self-esteem? Maybe Vienna wouldn't wait for me. I just want time in a tree. Uh, if someone wants to do something with those two, match them up. I can't, but I think that it would be really awesome if someone were to be able to put those two artists together to work together because I think that they would really get along with each other and they would make a great banger, specifically with these two songs. Next up, we are going to, of course, our young, our oldest, Mr. Worldwide Handsome, Jin himself. Um, he has quite actually a great plethora of, of solo songs. Um, Epiphany is one of my favorite BTS songs ever. Um, I love when he plays the piano and sings it. Oh my god, when he has that purple hair and he's doing the Love Yourself stage. <laughs> However, we're gonna go with the song that he wrote for his sugar glider, Abyss. Abyss is a very like solemn goodbye song, um, kind of like sweet nothings of like, you know, saying farewell to something dear and close to you. It's very sweet, it's very beautiful, it's very lovely. I, however, am going to pair it up with something that's a little bit more unexpected, which is Atlantis by Bridget Medler. So if you don't know Bridget Medler, she was, again, another actor turned singer. She was a Disney kid. She was on Good Luck Charlie. She was uh, most, in my favorite thing, Lemonade Mouth that she did. Then I got here. Um, and she's obviously acted in a bunch of different stuff after that. She also has the voice of a beautiful, beautiful hummingbird. She has this way of melodically putting together a song that is super interesting and I kind of want her to put out more music because it's really underrated the way that she does her songs. Um, specifically the song that I'm going for, again I said Atlantis, but it's the acoustic version. Um, it is a kind of a flip side, I guess you could say. It's like a flip side of how like... Uh, Jin's is more of a begrudging sayonara and hers is like this is where I told you to fuck off but like not really fuck off it's like kind of melodically similar in that like kind of like a longing kind of a feel to it undertone and I think that the, both of those songs would uh kind of like vibe together so like listening to like Jin's Abyss and then kind of like how it would congruently go with um the acoustic version specifically the acoustic version of Atlantis by Bridget Medler so here is Abyss by Jin from BTS and here is Atlantis by Bridget Medler. It's a sleep with the fishes down in Atlantis. Sometimes you lose sight of hope Know that you don't falter often When you do, you grow Know that life could have you lost Like your compass broke Next up, next up We have our sugar Hyung Um, my bias My bias Um, I love sugar Obviously, anyone he pairs up with Is amazing It's going to be amazing He did a uh, pair up with Juice World, Who passed away, of course um, on that song. He is, I guess, the one with the most features. I guess RM would have the most features because he's paired up with like Wale, which again, a song that I love. Where are they gonna change? But, um, and Warren G and Fall Out Boy and, uh, of course Lil Nas X, Soul Town Road. Uh, they've all paired up with Lil Nas X on Soul Town Road. Um, <laughs> Grammys. Uh, but I wanted to put Sugar with someone who matches his don't give a fuck energy to an exorbitant amount and also is a songwriter who writes solely on experience but, like, um, in a melodic and anthropic way. Um, the song I'm going with for Suga, there's so many good ones. People, Hanzo from his 
uh, from his um, you know solo stuff but I did want to go with Nevermind from his intro on the BTS album it just it that song hits me very differently uh, I have Nevermind tattooed on me like it, that song really just it really exposes the underbelly of what you're feeling at that moment and how you can be feeling and how like you know mental health and how that makes you aware and in it you know and so I want to spare him up with someone an artist who doesn't who gives less of a fuck than him maybe honestly and that is Jesse Reyes Jesse Reyes has a habit that is uh, greatly appreciated of turning situations in her life and in the life of those around her into music and not in a Taylor Swift way in a you know not to bash Taylor Swift or whatever that's not what we're here for but in a more so kind of a vibey like a, a cautionary tale way one of the first songs I listened to her by her was Gatekeeper which is an amazing song uh we are the gatekeepers spread your legs open up you could be famous you know we're holding the dreams that you're chasing you know you're supposed to get drunk and get naked uh it's a, a, a autobiographical song for her on her part of like how she was treated when she was coming up in the music industry um, and how they're like these gatekeepers kind of you know vibe and you know Shuka knows all about gatekeepers because he broke all those gates down but I did want to put Sugar's Nevermind which is a heavy hitting soulful song not with gatekeeper even though I think that they could vibe together very well I wanted to do another song that she had called Saint Nobody Saint Nobody it literally starts of with I think about dying every day I've been told that that's a little strange yeah. it's like it's this kind of anthem of like you know someone who is up against the wall with those feelings of death and but feeling like they still have to work constantly no matter what to push and prevail but like not necessarily prevail but just survive and that gives me the same vibe as never mind you know kind of exposing your demons of thoughts of you know death depression all of those things um specifically these two lines really like correlate to me in my mind but i think that it would make a lot of sense to pair that up with sugar especially with his like you know uh greatness in writing and how her greatness in writing will kind of uh, put together these masterpieces uh so here is never mind by sugar if you haven't heard it and here is uh saint nobody by jesse reyes which i highly recommend if you've never heard it if i get there in my takes on e then i'll be okay destinations like it's about the journey anyway nobody's gonna say i didn't give it all i think about dying every day he said fuck a nine to five i'm eight to faint yeah since somebody's got it worse i don't complain another reason why i work like a motherfucker next up we have jehu jehu um it is great to hear this man do anything i love his mixtape stuff so much hope world i love hope world i love all of their mixtapes don't get me wrong, love all of them, but Hope World, there's something special about that shit, okay? You can put it on at any point. And with that, uh, obviously it has a, a little bit of a sunny aura, but it still talks about like, you know, issues and like feelings as the BTS members do. And the song that I'm choosing from the Hope World mixtape is in fact, Daydream. Hey, daydream. And I really love that song it kind of like again it's like this flip of like kind of deeper lyrics with like a bouncier beat and because of that I put him with an artist who uh, has a lot of bouncier beats with his deeper lyrics and that is Strome. Strome, yes. He's already been in a song that had three separate languages English, Spanish, and Korean. Why not throw French into the mix? Um, 
I think that Strome, if you don't know him, he's a Belgian artist who is super amazing, known for powerful performances, specifically powerful dance performances as well. Could you imagine a dance mashup of J-Hope and Strome? It would be incredible. I think that J-Hope might be stumped by whatever the fuck Strome is doing on stage because sometimes I don't know if it's actually dancing, it's just awkward movements, but we appreciate it. Um, but with Strome, uh, he also tends to have like popular beats and hip hippier, happier beats with deeper meanings. Is so does Hobie, and the song that specifically when it's put together was actually I Long Long. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense to me in my head. The beats kind of match up the intricacies of it all. I think that they would actually get along as humans because uh, while. J-Hope does very well with like sort of introvert people and I think that Stromae is a little bit more introverted but still musically and sonically like talented and gifted and dance fully I guess kind of talented and gifted so that's why I kind of put them together so here is Daydream by J-Hope if you haven't heard it. Ooh, they, they dream. And then here is A Long Dance by Strome, if you haven't heard it. Titi proche te dit deuil car les problèmes ne viennent pas seuls. Titi crise te dit monde, dit famine, dit tiers monde. Titi fatigue, dit réveil. Alors on sort pour oublier tous les problèmes. Alors on danse. Next up, we have my Libra brother from another mother, Mr. Park J. Man. That dude can dance and sing, huh? Um, Jimin is a, another peaceful, high falsetto vocalist who is just super talented in everything he does. Again, he's a member who has less solo songs than like obviously RM, J-Hope, Sugar because they have mixtapes to pick off of. So I was like, do I go with a solo song? Do I just go with a song that he like has a lot of lines in? But he does have a song that's a solo song that is called Promise. That is so beautiful and melodically intricate. That is just a beautiful meaning behind it. It is amazing. It is kind of like this, this beautiful uh, effervescent piece of kind of like love and like, you know, security and that love and such. And so I wanted to put him with an artist who is a phenomenal singer, obviously, who can, you know, belt out high notes, obviously, because I want, when I'm making a, a, a mashup, I want them to be in the same, you know, like, power range, you know? So with Jimin, as much as I love Promise and everything, I put him up with Ella Array. Uh, I don't know if I ever say her name correctly, and I, excuse me if I do not. Um, but she is a phenomenal British artist. Um, one of her most famous songs is I Just Got Paid. She has a feature on. Um, she has like a bunch of songs. My favorite song I think that she does, she does a cover of We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off that is like really stripped back and slowed down. That is amazing and I really appreciate it. But for this, we are doing her own song, Come Back, which is kind of the flip reverse of what Jimin's promise is, which is like, I like that. I either want the songs to be similar or super different. And I feel like they're, these two songs are super different, but melodically they ride the same beat and have the same inflections with them. Uh, Come Back is kind of like this, uh, this stressful time period. And it's like not just the regular Come Back, because the regular Come Back is a little bit more bouncy, but it's the Come Back that's stripped. I love when she sings it it's amazing it is really uh it sits in your soul very deeply um so here is with that with further ado here's uh jimin's promise <laughs> Come back. 
Next up, we have our weird alien boy and our sexy daddy player playa. I don't know. He's been giving off extra vibes. Like, the way he'd be looking at people during concerts and stuff, it'd be extra. So, I don't even know where to classify this man at right now. It's V. V. Uh, v is just a silly, beautiful, dark-toned voice who also can hit falsettos really really well but I wanted to focus and hone in on his dark tones because that's really where we first met him um, it's some of his strongest points stigma he sang uh, really beautiful and lovely and melodic um, obviously had like a very darker tone to it and we appreciate that so I want to take us back to that um, and put him with an artist who I love so much and is known so very well for his dark tones and how beautiful his baritone is and how it vibrates in his chest and I've seen him in concert it makes you vibrate in your chest um, he also happens to be Nigerian which is just a plus on my part it's Jacob Banks more so than Nigerian he's actually British if you don't know Jacob Banks he has a very wide range of music um that have been featured on the cw multiple times um because of his like you know shaky voice and how deep and beautiful his songs are And for this, I wanted to put together V's Sweet Night, which I didn't talk about earlier, which I should have. Um, V's Sweet Night, um, the beautiful piece that he did for Itaewon class, which is so cute because, you know, he's just doing it for his bestie, bestie and a tessie. Um, and I also wanted to take that kind of, like, idea of, like, having this, like, one sweet night, like this, imagine your face, like, kind of a vibe with, and pair it with kind of the gritty undertones. Again, I like to do sames or opposites. So I wanted to pair it with the gritty underwrong tone of unknown to you. Oh, please be good to me. I'm drinking holy water. Melody. While V's Sweet Night is really giving you that like we're together kind of vibe like uh, that you and me against the world kind of a vibe and feeling unknown to you is kind of like this begging piece of just come back to me. So I like the juxtaposition of that. Both of their tones are very dark and rich and lovely and we appreciate them and I think that having that fun playoff would be amazing and really interesting to see how it happens and also we can really do, do those high notes justice that you know Jacob Banks doesn't usually teeter in and it could add a whole nother dynamic to the song. <laughs> them up or you know even just feature so that's kind of why I put them together so here's V Sweet Night Jacob Banks and here's Jacob Banks unknown to you say that you don't want me say that you don't need me tell me I'm the fool baby tell me you've been tortured tell me you've been bitter and what I've done to you even if it doesn't matter matter was true say that you don't want me say not least we have our baby boy Jackai yes Mr. Jungkook uh he is our R&B god if we're being honest like yes V hits those low tones in R&B and yes the rap line does fuck it up every time and yes Hobie even in his rap line voice it can hit a R&B melodic rap but however JK has a distinct R&B vibe about him you see that really in my time <laughs> And you see
see that in a lot of his other songs that he chooses to participate in one of the things that you do see um that you don't really see it in but it could kind of turn that way is the song Euphoria. uh it's a very fun freeing song very catchy uh catch-all like uh kind of talking about this like beautiful kind of relationship and how it makes you feel euphoric now i want to put him up with someone and specifically with a song that it would really make sense with because that song it has a lot of like bit eight moments that uh like happens in the dance break and all those things So I wanted to put him up with a young artist who like super can vibe in those pockets where it's like a dance break um, and that is Alicia Cara. If you don't know who Alicia Cara is, uh, shame on you. I love her so much. I have her vinyl literally right here. Literally right here. This is one of my favorite albums. Uh, the Pains of Growing by Alicia Cara is one of my favorite albums. And ironically, this song is on this album that I'm going to be talking about. She is most known for, of course, her feature on Logic song, 18, 1800. I don't know the number. Uh, I don't want to be alive. I don't want to be alive. Um, Ooh, that's weird to be dancing to that, huh? But she also, of course, was known for her first breakout hit here. I'm sorry if I seem uninterested. Um, and that just really vibed with the world because we were all like, yeah, what are we doing fucking here? Like, let's get out of this world party. Um, the song, however, that I'm going to choose is a song that also has 8-bit in it and kind of gives you a video game feel, kind of like Euphoria, and that is Nintendo Game. Um, I put those together because simply, I think this song actually inspired the list because like Nintendo games, listening to Nintendo games and Euphoria back to back is like super, like you really feel like you're in the level of Wreck-It Ralph video game. It's like a lot of 8-bit, a lot of like really like DDD kind of noises and, and but like, you know, using a lot of metaphors as well. Let's go. You know that's really cute Nintendo game and also again we'd like to go opposites with the with the young line we went similar with the Machne line we're going opposite baby okay we're going opposites because Euphoria is all about you know making you feel that you are the cause of my Euphoria you know kind of really getting into that like loving feeling that you've brought me to a new world Nintendo game is like stop playing with my feelings mother and like I feel like it could be like a cute little call and response like she's like calling him out like that you're playing this Nintendo game where nobody wins and he finally like gives out and is like you are my euphoria you want me to tell you the truth the truth is you are my euphoria girl and I think that that would be really cool to play off of off of each other uh, both of their ranges again similar I love him when he's in his R&B pocket she sings R&B so it matches up pretty well but she's not so R&B that it might be uh, out of place for him because um, she has like a little pop influence in her so I really love it and I think that they would do a great rendition together if they were to match it up somehow so here is Euphoria a Jungkook of course you've heard it but here it is Alicia Cara's Nintendo game, which is great. Baby, 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 this love ain't a game, so we should stop playing. Push and shove, go ahead and take your aim. We better duck, cause right now nobody's safe and we could grow up. But it's no fun that way, and so we treat love like it's a Nintendo game, but nobody wins. Alright, with that being said, that wraps up our list today. Thank you guys for joining me i'm yummy.com really hope you like this kind of a video let me know what you think and your thoughts are and who you want bts to pair up with uh sugar still waiting on that logic uh hit but i don't know because he retired apparently whatever um anyways thank you for watching i'm yummy.com don't worry i'll be back so stay tuned my internet friends